Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. At sax.com, it's easy to find your new vibe. Dive into the Western trend with gold cowboy boots from Stodd or go full 90s throwback with platforms from Prada. You can shop Saks.com for everything on your agenda, whether it's a breezy Zimmerman dress for a garden party or a bright Chloe blazer for brunch. Find inspiration for your new vibe every day at Saks.com. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it. Yes, they sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yo Bravs. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi. How are you? Disaster. I'm a disaster today. No. You know, we've been off um, not recording this because my I got a new audio input, and then that was causing fuzz, and then that caused everything that I unplugged it, and then I unplugged everything, and then it's just been a, it's, it's an electrical disaster today is what's happening over here. Hmm. Well, you're not a disaster. You're a human anti-disaster. <laughs> Thanks, man. A triumph. You're a triumph. Oh, guys. Welcome to the show. Um, disasters or not, here we are. Today is Below Deck Day, and we're excited to be here. Also, we're going to be excited to be in Los Angeles and Dublin and London and Birmingham in May. We're going to all four of those places. Yeah. We're also going to be seeing Taylor Swift in Stockholm. So hi, Tay Tay. See you soon. If you guys want to come see yeah. us, um, go to watchwithcrappens.com for ticket links. Uh, if you want to see Taylor, that's her own damn business. Okay. <laughs> um, we can tell you one thing. The tickets to our shows are not nearly as expensive as Taylor's <laughs> shows. <laughs> so if you're looking to save some money, come to a crappin show instead of uh, Era's tour. Yeah, it's the same basic thing at the end of the day, really. It is. Um, We'll sing the songs if you want. Yeah. So um, welcome. Today is Below Deck Day. As we said, this week's uh, bonus, it's a two-parter because we have Vanderpump Villas coming down the pike. So we're doing that uh, for bonus episodes on Patreon. These are videos on Patreon as well. Well, You know, it's enough advertising. I'm I'm going crazy. Let's do this recap, shall we? Hello, deckies. Yeah, let's do it. So um, everyone was on a beach day last time we saw the show, and Fraser and Barbie were just having a rough day, and he is over it. And You're he's a horrible like, person, a horrible person when you don't want to speak to anyone. I'm done. I'm done, actually. It's Fraser's rom-com. Done, comma, actually. It's just Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm done actually. laughs> i just feel like that's fraser his best is just being in a snit but you can't do that when you're the boss okay and if you are in a snit it has to be like a kate chastain snit like a quiet 
better than you snit. Not like an yes. everything is getting to me emotionally and I'm just going to lose my shit every two seconds snit. It's like your third season. Cut the crap. It needs to either be like, Kate, I'm better than you. It has to be Hannah. Um, don't you dare act like this because I will destroy you. Or Faye, which is more like, I don't know why you're talking to me right now when you don't have your hair up. Speaking of, I was watching Peacock, as one does. I was watching Top Chef, actually, which we don't need to get into because we already we already went in on that one on Potomac. But I was watching it. Well, I thought I was watching it because Peacock <laughs> has a fucked up way of scrolling to things and pressing play. Like, I could yeah. swear to you I pressed play on Top Chef. But then this gorgeous screen comes up and I hear, oh, tell you what, we're in for an adventure. And then I hear, well, I've never seen anywhere as gorgeous as I have now, right now. <laughs> we are living in heaven. We are living and working right in the center of heaven's universe, which is heaven. It's heavenly. It's heavenly, I tell you. And I was like, this is the best Top Chef ever. It's a below deck adventure themed. Faye's pregnant ass going to be up here. I was so excited, but then it was just below deck adventure and I had to oh. watch these terrible guests. Oh my God. These oh. guests suck. The people, Fraser sucks. I was so, Ben really sucks. I was so upset. Lady, congrats on your baby, Faye, but I'm really pissed off that you did this to me. I hope you're prepared to do like every man does on this show and leave that little fucker for my entertainment. Yeah. We're going to need to find a way to get, to get, um, Faye on the show as Chief Stew. I mean, I enjoy Fraser enough. Um, I appreciate the variety of having a male Chief Stew, but let's be honest, we need Faye and we need her now. Faye is so good and not enough people, I believe not enough people really are aware of Faye. And I like she would have handled Barbie in the most hilarious way. She just would have walked up to Barbie and just sort of stared at her and said, and then Barbie could have had an attitude and Faye would have been like, but you're still going to clean the teacups, yes? <laughs> <laughs> That's Faye, fine, dear. Faye is one of the most underrated. Now, Fraser, listen, it's a it's a fellow gay. We want to see a gay, you know, do his thing. But otherwise, I'm not a hater of Fraser. I just, this job is basically like having the audience as the HR division. Because, you know, like even when you go read below deck threads on Reddit, which are hilarious if you haven't, um, they're so funny because it's really people just pretending they're everybody's boss. Like, I would not take that kind of behavior at work. And that kind of back talk is not for even the break room. Not even in the break room. It's like people going <laughs> off about, like, how much better they are than everyone else in the office. You know, it's it's a lot of, like, who ate my lunch conversations in there. And so I feel like we are HR as the audience. And so that's where Fraser is running into problems with me. It's the HR in me. That's like, you can't talk to people like this when you're the boss. Mm -hmm. Like, who raised you? I get your first time, your first season or whatever, but how many seasons? You can't just go into gay rage whenever you get pissed off. And especially screaming at women. Like, that's not, you can't do that. He's just, he's trying to figure out his chief stew voice. And so last season he was trying to be friends with everyone. It didn't work out. So this season he's trying to be like the boss, but he's like going too he's going too far, you know, uh, also, in terms of like, he's getting involved in the petty fights rather than just being above it. And just saying like, fix your attitude or, or like we're moving on. But also last year, he was not above it all. And I love that he keeps saying that like, Oh, well last year I was just friends with everybody. No, you weren't. You were terrible. There. <laughs> You hated Camille and you hated that other girl too. Why are you pretending that you were like the biggest peacekeeper on the show? You weren't. I mean, you weren't like screaming like you are this. I don't know if screaming's the right word. Is that a microagation? I don't know. But he's, <laughs> no. he's a little uh, like, yeah, screaming at Barbie. I like, I just don't like it. I don't like it. It's rubbing me the wrong way. It's more like he's engaging with Barbie as if she is his peer pun intended but the truth is that like she's not his peer she works for him and it's like you can be frustrated at the person working below you and you can say things like you need to fix your attitude but uh he's engaging in a certain way where it's like if they're both going off and like not talking to each other like across the pool it's like mm, that's sort of a that's like a petty look for a boss and also chasing down an employee on a day off to fight with them when she's not doing anything She's leaving him alone. Yeah. He's like literally chasing her down 
talking to everybody about her, which is gross, and then chasing her down and forcing a fight. It's just like ugh, it's, it's I mean, it, it's not it's not professional that that he goes and um, offloads onto or unloads onto the the new stew. He really shouldn't be doing that in the first place that he doesn't really know very well anyway, on top of all that. But like you said, you know, upon thinking about it over the past week, which I didn't think much about it, but like it was Barbie's day off and you're allowed to bitch about your boss. That's actually like totally acceptable. It's like one of the God given rights of an employee. It's some of the only power that an employee has is to be able to bitch about your boss. So he should have just let her blow off steam and just focus on getting a good job done. Yeah. Here, here. Okay, so here we are at the True Blue Bay Resort, which I love that it's called True Blue when literally Barbie is crying. I think that's so funny. Uh, so Ben yeah, is walking around True Blue. That means like sad. Oh, but but the but, but the Madonna song is True Blue, baby, I love you. Is she sad when she's singing I think that she's song? She's sad. Yeah, I think oh. I think she's sad. It's like you broke up with me. Hold on, what is that song? True. I don't blue know. What, I actually don't really know what lyrics. True Blue means. Just like words to me that oh, rhyme. Of course, fucking True Billie blue. Eilish had to have a song called that as well. So let me specify. It's Madonna. Let me specify. It's BB before Billy. Okay, there was a world before True fucking Billy meaning Eilish. True blue means to be completely loyal to a person. You don't have to be. Oh, which is funny because why would anyone sad. call their bait? I guess just blue, regular blue. Is Maybe sad, like right? truly blue is like I am really sad because I'm truly blue. Yeah, but true blue is like I am. I am with you to yeah, the end. Yeah, this song is way, sad. True love, you're the one I'm <laughs> dreaming of. True, your love, heart yeah. fits me like a glove. Like a, and I'm going to be love. true blue. Okay, I thought it was sad. You true know what? Blue, you live, you learn. <laughs> It's like, my heart belongs to you and I'm going to be sad. Maybe because if you thought it was like, she's like, the the, per, the guy moved on, left Madonna behind. And she's like, I'll still be loyal to you, but I'll be sad because you left me. No, I'm just dumb. Okay, so um, True Blue, never mind. It's not funny. They're just at a place called True Blue. <laughs> so, I'm like, Ronnie, I need to relitigate your joke. I don't believe there's humor in it. I'm I glad think you it's... did. <laughs> now, if they were just at Blue Bay, it still wouldn't be funny. Okay, so. Or very Blue Bay point is ben is in a budgie smuggler and nobody needs that in their life no, and sunny no. is still like love him love him gonna marry him <laughs> gonna have little big ba budgie smuggling babies yeah not into it so barbie is like sobbing in the bathroom to her mom on the phone she's like, oh, i ruined the day for everyone mom and she's like you didn't ruin the day for anyone except for me because i was actually enjoying myself this afternoon until you called listen the only people ruined by this family are Pepsi people, okay? So don't you worry about yourself. And any and any of those Pepsi people fucking deserved it. And she's like, but I'm crying. So and she's like, you're not a quitter. Now, not that much of a worker either, really, honestly. I mean, we're rich as hell, so why would you? But, you know. You can't be a quitter unless you're a worker in the first place. No, she does work. I just I always know, she's want to say, deal. like, she doesn't have to work because she's so rich. But the point is, she's rich, but she still works, which. I know. She's it's like the biggest it. mystery. Get it. I'll tell you whose day she ruined our day because we weren't able to make a good joke about the fact that she's like a spoiled princess because she works. She like ruins the spoiled princess thing for us. I'm telling you, it's, it's the day I'm having. Yeah. The electricity Sorry. doesn't work right. There's buzzing on the audio. Barbie's rich. <laughs> there are flies on the jugs. <laughs> Big enough to. What do they say? <laughs> there are flies on her dugs, big That's enough to be a thugs, while her That's withers wither with her. <laughs> okay, guys, we're talking back into the woods now. Let's get back to it. So Fraser is bitching to Zandy. He's like, every time I've spoken to her, she said, no, you're the problem. It's you. I'm done. It's you. It's not me. It's it's me all the time. It's always me. You're the boss. Calm down, bro. Yeah. And so... Anthony's like, yeah, well, she's in the bathroom crying on the phone saying she's going to leave right now. And so Fraser has this glass. He swirls. He goes, let's send her a care package. <laughs> this is so his Betty Davis moment. That glass is bigger than his head, first of all. It's huge. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> send her a care package. <laughs> ah, that chair. Yeah, ah, Blanche. And so Sandy's like, oh, yeah, honestly, we love her. We leave her. So... God bless. When did you turn into Sandy. such a fucking vampire? 
Well, they, well, because well, she is a vampire, so she's not comfortable being in the sun right now. So she's probably more prone to being cranky. Yeah, and she, she, see, I'm failing on all ends today because she even called herself a vampire in the beginning, right? She's like, That's it's more like, when did you become such a human? When did you become someone who can tolerate the sun and see your reflection? <laughs> yeah, like her opening thing was like, I'm vampire. I don't. Okay, so then. Um... <laughs> She's like, if you don't want to be here, no one's going to force you. I would help you pack. So then inside, or now Barbie is talking to Kyle. And she's like, I'm not a quitter. I'm not even a right now. And he's like, then be yourself then. Come on, girl. No one's stopping you from being yourself other than you. You got four more characters. Just be above it. Just do it. <laughs> this is advice coming from a, a cowboy. <laughs> A newly minted cowboy <laughs> from Montana. I just found out. <laughs> I just found out. I've got blood from Idaho. Um, he's like, shut it. I, if you quit, I'll never speak to you again. Mainly because I'm going off to Wyoming. So they, uh, they now it's time to get ready for the night. And uh, Dylan is like dancing in the bathroom. Like, go, go dance. Like, oh, yeah, I got hot body now. Yeah, look at these right now. Now, hold on one second. I hear the calories in the wall. Hold on, let me just scrub down the wall so I don't get wall calories. Uh, um, so uh, could you play uh, the song? Um, I like big butts and I cannot lie, just so I could say, liar, nobody likes big butts. <laughs> um, so then, um... <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Anyone still listening to this, just log off, because I this can't. Be, you just I need love, to go I away a, now. I love a deranged blow deck recap. One of my favorite shows to be deranged on is when we do it on blow deck. Just warning you now, it's not going to get better, anybody who's still on the line. True Blue, I hate the film on him. <laughs> That's his favorite version of the song. <laughs> True Blue, I hate the film on him. <laughs> um, so also, Barbie is crying still, and she's like, I've never quit. I've never quit a job. Well, then you just haven't been paying a fucking attention. Who hasn't quit a job? That's the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. One of the greatest freedoms we have in life is doing this. Fuck you. I'm sick of this fucking place. I never liked you. I mean, at least an inside voice. Quit! America, if you hate your job, quit it. Right now, just say, fuck you and leave. Go eat someone's lunch in the in the fridge and get out of there. The worst boss I ever had who abused me, I would show up, it would be like 12 hours a day of constant abuse. Finally, one day, I just walked in, and in true band fashion, I said, I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna move on, but I'm going to give you a three-week notice. <laughs> three <laughs> I weeks. gave a three-week notice. <laughs> and then every day in those three weeks, you were like, mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> yep. Take yep, it. I was. And I was like, hmm. you've only got 20 I'm a, days I'm a better left, employee buddy. now. It was great because he couldn't emotionally abuse me for three weeks because there was no point. So he then started being nice to me. And then he was like, why are you being a good, why are you being a good assistant now? I was like, because you're not yelling at me. He yeah. goes, oh. No. Oh, well. I also don't believe in not yelling at your employees. So we're at a conundrum. <laughs> this is what we call an impasse in this discussion. <laughs> so torn. <laughs> So, um, so Paris walks by Ben and Ben's like, hi. And she's like, hi, 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 Australian hi, Australian hi. And then he like, kind of like goes and he kind of goes back to her and then he like hugs her and kind of like caresses the back. Like he like goes in for like a kiss, Ugh, not, not so like a smooch, skeevy. but it's like very handsy and kissy and like right in front of Sonny too. He's such a skeeve ball. So he's like, oh, hello, girls. Oh, Sonny, you look great. And uh, Sonny's like, what the fuck? Oh, also, I'm sorry. I keep calling her Summer. I don't know why. Um, it's okay. There's sun involved sunny in, the in summer. both of this. I avoid both the sun and Summer. So um, <laughs> she's just kind of getting me on all fronts there. So she's like, what the fuck? I feel like I've been seeing this guy since the very beginning, and he's just playing his temptation now. This is so disrespectful to me. This is not cool. You just look like an asshole, and I cannot wait to get married. <laughs> I know. <laughs> totally sleeping with him tonight. Fucking Sonny. You tell him, Sonny. You tell yeah. him. 
So now they're all walking to dinner, and Summer and Zan- I mean, Sunny and Zandy are like walking right behind Ben and Paris. And Sunny's like, I am just so disgusted. Like, come on, like flirt, like let's let oh let's flirt, let's just like flirt right now. It's just disgusting behavior. I'm, you know, and this isn't even tequila. I'm not even drunk enough to be. I'm just like, angry. I was like, yes, you're gonna be so angry that you're going to let him just walk all over you. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, what's your sad tequila character again? She's like, oh, I have this alter ego. It's like Clementine or something. Rebecca. Her name Sabrina. Is like Sarah. Tequila Sarah. <laughs> Her name is Alanis Morissette. No, that would be a good one. Could you imagine being a, te- a tequila Alanis? You like go out and drunk and then suddenly you're like, I want you to know. That would be the like literally the scariest thing if you're on a date. Like, so do you like to party? It's like, yeah, when I drink, I call my drunken side Alanis Morissette. <laughs> it's like, oh no. <laughs> it's like, really? If you ever touch another woman again. <laughs> 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 Because I've got one hand on my ham and another <laughs> hand on the water faucet. Sorry, I thought we were doing sing along. I'm officially out of Aladdin songs. That's literally all I know. Oh, I would have gone for a very long time, but I decided to stop myself. Yeah. Thankfully, I am not knowledgeable enough to continue down that path. You're all welcome. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie, and we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews, but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I, or download the app today. Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95 at Byte.com. Byte Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Okay, I'm back. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. So dinner. Is, uh, dinner. Now, now I'm just calling her dinner. It wasn't disrespectful <laughs> enough to call her summer. Now I'm calling her dinner, which is actually something I like. You see how I go full circle in a <laughs> opinion circle? So they go to dinner. So she's trying to bitch so that Ben will care because she's walking and she's doing it right behind him, literally behind his back while he's flirting with Sonny. But he does not, I'm not Sonny, uh, Paris, but he literally <laughs> does not care. He just loves Paris. <laughs> yeah, doesn't? because Paris, we've decided, is an instant gay icon. She's mother, iconic. Paris is and mother. So- yeah, no, Paris is great. So, uh, yeah, so he doesn't care. He, he, there's hot blonde Aussie there, so bye, Sonny. So then uh, Dylan is like, I want to make a video, chef. Try to look sexy. Mm-hmm. And um, Only he, of course, he takes selfies like this. He's like, oh, yeah, I take selfies. Yeah, look at myself. I'm like, oh, geez, calm down. He's like <laughs> shimmying into the camera. <laughs> so they, they all sit at this table. And Barbie's like, guys, I want to do a toast. Um, I just want to apologize for all the shit going on today. I mean, I think everyone knows there's stuff going on between me and Freezer. He's a little bit more of a Pepsi person, obviously, like, outside the family brand. But we're trying to, like, work through it and, like, just, like, be better about it. Like, don't just be about it. Like, talk about No, talk about it. Don't just be about it. Whatever it is, like, tons of drama. And, like, Freezer, we have to figure this out. And I'm like... I'm sorry it's affected everyone, and for those who are unaffected, I'm sorry that you're being affected by it right now in my toast. Yeah. And uh, Kyle's like, here, here. And Sandy says, I I think that's the worst toast I've ever heard, but I'll toast to it anyway. Why the fuck not? Uh, So they're like, what the hell was that? So then Ben, of course, is very affected by that toast. So he turns to Paris and he's like, are you on Instagram? 
Oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so gross. Yeah. He's like, yes, I'm at I'm at Porcupine Dick. Google it. Oh, because that's another thing. Can we? Yeah, this is a big thing that's been haunting us all week. Echidna, echidna, echidna. So, which I, I did not know. I've heard of echidnas. I don't know. That's actually how they're. That's how you say them. I always thought it was echinida. <laughs> um, by the way, well, I think uh, she would I'm know going, better than us. I mean, no offense. Uh, just want to say, uh, someone, someone assaulted my eyes by just sending a photo of an echidna's five pronged dick to us. Uh, I appreciate, I, I have been educated. We don't need to like, I think before you send animal dicks to me, just please give me a heads up uh, because I don't, I don't need to, I don't, it was too much. I woke up in the morning. It was the first thing I saw. And I was like, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I I don't know if I could do this today. I don't yeah. know if I can be here. <laughs> I don't blame you. I almost looked it up because people are like dummies. It's a kidnap, and you were right by the way because you said it last week. And then I was like, no, she's saying a kid, like a don like a kangaroo kid. It you know? made sense. Made sense. Like a don a kangaroo kid. It made kid, sense in my head, but I was alas, I was Alanis. I was wrong. Tequila Alanis. I was wrong. And um, so I was like, well, I'm going to Google this, uh, and I was like, no, but is that, that is that the thing with like a five dick? <laughs> It's like I'm not doing. Did you that see the because picture? I have very no. I'm not going to look at it either. Do not send it to me. <laughs> I'm not I going to. I have very high blood pressure. I could die at any moment. I don't want to be dead and then people find me with a like a an echidna dick. <laughs> They're like he in, had a strange kink. Phone. Yeah, yeah. Like he died looking just, at echidna porn. Like it's, it's just the strangest terrible. looking thing. And um, by the way, to the person who sent it, like it was very funny, but um, and it is wild. But I was just like. You know, when you're not expecting it and all of a sudden you're just confronted with a five pronged dick in your life, it's just like a lot. It's a lot to take in. That's it's a lot, lot to take in all of a sudden. Yeah. But, but now we know. Um, so yeah, Ben's trying to get with, with, uh, this girl. And so, um, Sunny is watching all of this <laughs> and not being subtle at all. She's like, did you see that? Did you see that? Even that, even just that Instagram, really? And Barbie's like, um, you know what? Uh, why don't you just, just switch, switch seats with Kyle. I'll sit by Kyle. I don't even mind. You can just go sit closer that you do what makes you happy. So they switch seats. And then Ben's like, I have no idea what's going on with Sunny. Maybe because you've got a fucking halfy while you're scrolling through this girl's Instagram right in front of Sunny, bro. Yeah, really? maybe it's because your five pronged dick is sticking up so so strong and hard that's lifting the table up because you're so turned on by this girl. And I think Come on that now. we know why because he's on TV and he's suddenly attractive. Because this guy was not getting it like this when he was not on TV. <laughs> Just some guy who worked on a boat. I'm sorry. But the being on TV factor has upped his hotness level. And I think he's just getting used to it. It's like Dylan. Like Dylan got used to, you know, losing some weight and being attractive for the first time. I think that that's how Ben feels. You know, he's like attractive. This attract. I'm not going to say attractive at all for the first time. But like this attractive. Because he's on right. TV. But I can't stand when fuck boys do this. Like, well, I have no idea what's going on with Sonny and I. I mean, what the hell? Why am I in a situation like this again? I mean, that's like, uh, it's like the tagline. What? How did this happen? You know, like when you string someone along and then you flirt with someone else in front of them and then they, uh, the first person gets upset and you're like, what? Well, like, I can't believe I'm always in these situations. Women, am I right? He literally, he literally says, says women. He, he literally says women and then rolls his eyes and laughs at the camera. Ugh. Okay, so um, Fraser is like, can you believe that she just said that in a toast? A toast of all things. That is the most disrespectful thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm dumb. And tomorrow will be three stews again. And that's it. Because I've been given the power. I'm Chief Stew now. And we'll see what happens to that. Like, okay, okay. Snivel, like literally twisting his mustache there on the side. No one cares. <laughs> And then just goes to Dylan trying to drink out of his glass and he spills on himself, which is like revenge of the calories. It's like, ah, we will attach ourselves to you some way. Maybe not on the inside, but on the outside. He did that on purpose because there was cream in that drink. He ordered like an espresso martini. That guy's it not going to drink a creamy drink. He spilled that shit on purpose. <laughs> That's such a good, that is a great conspiracy theory. He's like, true blue espresso martini on the chest. Oh, whoops. I spilled all the calories. Does, could you go <laughs> wash some ham for me? 
<laughs> so Ben and Sonny go to get like to, to go smoke. And um, Paris is like, hey, well, we're all we gonna do a little, we're gonna have a little ciggery. Is that what's gonna happen? Have a little ciggy? I'm gonna do a little ciggy. And she, Sonny's like, no, just him and I. And she's like, all right, Jesus, sorry. <laughs> well, I guess just gonna be me and the echidnas tonight. Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> so then um, Ben and Sonny go sit, and he's just looking at her like, why? Why are you so crazy? You know, and she goes, oh, you let me sit first? Wow, what a gentleman. So, how was your day? And he's like, <laughs> oh, the whole day. All I thought about was spending more of the day with you. Seriously. You're all I think about. She goes, oh, really? Mm-hmm. He's like, I hope that's reciprocated, though. Don't you? You know what might make us feel better? Let's look at Paris's bikini pics on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this picture. She put Christmas lights on each one of the kidneys' dicks. So... <laughs> <laughs> we did the holiday strangely i'm not gonna lie so sunny's like i feel disrespected in many ways like when someone touches someone else's waist and ass in front of me and everyone is just like uh, uh, and, and everyone else it's just like that's not okay ben and he goes well what do you want from me i mean what are we so he starts throwing in this thing like oh wait oh whoa you're trying to you're trying to lock me down well you're a crazy lady who wants to be in a relationship right now you're going so fast yes he is and he's doing that whisper thing where he goes what are we what even are we right now what is it he's just talking as low as he can for her to seem crazy now here's the thing she is fucking crazy okay She's crazy for dating Ben in the first place. There. there. Yeah. But uh, she's right. And she's also crazy for continuing. It's like, this isn't something you talk over. This is a disrespectful piece of shit. Okay. And the more you take it, the more he's going to do it. So she's crazy in that way. But she's very smart and that she knows exactly what he's doing. Because I have a feeling she's been called crazy a lot <laughs> by the last guy. And so now she's like not doing it and she's not giving him his way he's like trying to whisper so it makes it sound like she's yelling and she's like i'm not yelling i'm telling you very straight up you fuck what you're doing wrong you know and it's impressive because i don't think i would be able to be like that i would have dylan's milky drink all over this fucker's shirt yeah and sunny is like you know, it doesn't have to be titled that we're like an item for you to respect the fact that we're like sleeping together and that we're something. And he goes, I like you. And you know that. I like you. And you know that. I know that I like you. Look, she's yelling at me, everybody. They can't hear what I'm saying. But they can hear what you're saying. <laughs> so they're like, now they start to like clasp hands. And she goes, and I like you. Like, are we an item? And he goes, well, we're not dating right now. So she just drops her hands. It's like, okay, you're not dating. You're not exclusive. But, like, I'm sorry. If you guys are sleeping together, you're an item. Okay? I feel like item is, like, the base level of uh, not just friends. Like, because you're not just friends. You are sleeping with each other. There is a – there's something a little more than just friends. So I am saying item. Because you're not just well, it's annoying that people with, need friends, a certain friends word. with benefits. You need a certain word Alanis. combination to get any fucking decency or respect, and it's so annoying. It's like a game show where, like, you have to come. Oh, did I say the correct words? No, then you're going to continue to be disrespected because all I did. You're fucking. You're fucking. You're making out with her all over the boat. You're PDA. Everybody knows that you guys are together. So whether you call it together or not, you're being fucking disrespectful and you're embarrassing her in front of everybody else. Absolutely. Oh, run, run. And he goes. And then then he goes. Well, we're we're seeing each other and we're sleeping with each other. We're on our way to becoming an item. On your way to becoming an item. I mean, there's there's. Th there's not much time left on this boat, okay? You're an item. If you're seeing each other and sleeping with each other, that's called an item. Maybe you're on your way towards a relationship. Maybe you're on your way towards saying you're exclusive. But you're an item, sir. So um, she, so she's like, so are you telling me that you like me and that I like you? And that's going down the drain? So we're just sleeping together? And he goes, no. We have half a season to go, and hopefully by the end of it we could be an item. But right now we're sleeping together. Oh my god! Right now, when I think I have a chance with someone blonde and new, um, we're not together. But the second I find out I have no shot with her, we'll be official until I'm on the next charter and there's someone else to fuck. Okay. And all, 
I'll string you along, and then at the end, I'll commit to a relationship. But oopsie, long distance, it's not going to work out. Oh, well, well, I'm a gentleman because I decided to be exclusive with you. But unfortunately, the fates conspired against us because geography. So I get all the credit of being a gentleman without all the commitment of doing it. Right. All right. Good talk. Yeah, good talk. So she's like, whatever. So she's not pleased. So then back to the vans. And Sunny is like, oh, my God, the conversation we just had is such bullshit and then in ben's van i love him he's like paris did i touch your ass today at all which of course he's gonna do to paris so that he can be like see this crazy lady who's obsessed with me Mm-hmm. and then she's like i mean probably i don't know i get touched regularly you should see me walking around the echidnas am i right everyone <laughs> I was like, get those five fingers off my leg. And I took it down and you don't even want to see, know what I saw down there. Let me tell you what. When we got that echidna, he had one penis. Let me, let me tell you something. You never want to see an aroused echidna because if it goes too far, it's going to look like the Bellagio Fountains. <laughs> so then in the other van, so he's like, he was all over Paris. And Dylan's like, oh, yeah, he was sitting next to her like this. I mean, his hand was on a knee like that. And she's like, oh, God, so I'm not the only one seeing this then. And then back to Paris, she's like, oh, I mean, four people touched my ass today. I mean, it's a hello where I'm from, basically. I mean, who doesn't touch it? <laughs> Zandy's like, I didn't. She goes, yes, you did. Zandy's like, good God. <laughs> so then back at the boat, it's time to go to bed. And Zandy crawls <laughs> in. Oh, no, not Zandy. Um, what's her bun? Sunny crawls into the top bunk with Barbie and just starts sobbing. And Barbie's like, oh, my God, we're totally getting up from my own today. Just cry. Let it out, honey. Just let it out, honey. Let it out, poor person. I know that you have to be here because you it's a necessity. Okay. I know, I know how hard that must be. <laughs> and then um, uh Paris is saying, you know, like, oh, well, you know, Sonny's, Sonny's upset with me. And Zandy's like, oh, well, you know, boatman's are stupid people. It's just what happens. Paris is like, yeah, they always end in tears. Am I right? Sort of like an echidna doing the Olympics. <laughs> God. So then um, Sonny's still crying. I don't want to get hurt again. Well, stop running into a brick wall. Okay? Seriously. I know. At some point. I don't want to get hurt. That's why I'm going to go after him one more time. 20 times. So then um, Paris is still going on about her ass. She's like, well, if someone touched it, it was probably just an accident. All right. You know, look, flirting goes over my head most of the time. And I don't want to be that new girl who comes in and upsets everyone just like that. You know, I mean, boys just want to fuck 24 seven. And I forget that. It's just how boys are. You know, I think the only person who I noticed touched my ass was Dylan, but to be fair, he was wiping some ham on it for some reason. Said something about the calories. <laughs> Didn't quite get it. <laughs> So now there's some like girl power song about like wearing high heels and feeling it or something. Okay, so then Fraser radios. He's like, Captain, Captain, may I meet you in the bridge? I'm like, oh God, <laughs> did you bring the giant glass? Because I really need you to bring your giant Betty Davis glass and they'd be like, we need to have a talk, Captain. Here's what's happening here. Someone has crossed the line, crossed the line, I tell you. Jill Zarin's going to pop up and be like, okay, Fraser, I just want to give you a little bit of advice. If, you, if you're angry at someone, why don't you use a smaller glass? It's, you have less chance of it for breaking. Just letting you know for next time. It'll be a better better confrontation. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> How's Nugget Ice going to stay alive in a glass that big? I mean, it's good, but it's not a miracle. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's still a nugget. It's this big. It's like it's like a quarter of the size of a regular ice. Unless we're talking about the big crescent ice, you know, that's it's like an eighth of that ice. I mean, what are you expecting with this? With a glass this big, it's going to be a puddle by the end. You're going to be carrying around a, an icy puddle. <laughs> You're welcome. I've been very honest. I've been very honest with cap with my captain this season, and I'm going to continue that by expressing my concerns with Barbie. This is my gut feeling, and as a hideously overweight person as I am, I. My gut feeling means a lot. So I need her gone. She's causing that much aggravation amongst my team. I'm better off without you, Bobby. All right, matey. Lay it on me now. You've got about... You, you're basically like... Uh, what's a face we just talked about? You're basically like Faye in a scarf. Why do I feel some anger emanating <laughs> off of you? He's like, well, I was about to wear an anger scarf. <laughs> Is that where I got it from? All right. Anyway, here's what's happening. Now, listen. <sighs> I've done everything I could. 
And I'm speaking in past tense because I've done everything. Do you understand me? Past tense because she's dead to me now. Do you understand? <laughs> the lack of respect, the undermining of my authority, it is past its sell-by date. It is old milk. It is cream for someone else's coffee. Someone who likes very, very sour cream because it's past its expiration. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Barbie must go. Excuse me, I couldn't help but over here is the cream. Is it non-dairy and is it skin by any chance? Get out of here, dear Lynn. It's not your conversation. <laughs> so then he goes, the Fraser goes, and the cherry on top. Metaphorical, Dylan, I know, sugar, etc. The cherry on top was after yesterday she made a speech to the table, airing her dirty laundry between her and I. It's horrible, actually. Terrible, hideous, disgusting, vile, putrid, American. <laughs> All right, well, we you could have had me an American, mate, but listen, <laughs> we have to find someone else, but it was a hard last charter, and I don't want to be down a stew again. Now, the second thing we need to do here is we need to separate personal from business. Do you understand? Because that was the day off. So her being insulting to you, you took that personally, which is fine, but that's separate from business. And he's like... I understand. So this isn't going my way. So basically, when I said the end of my rope and spoiled milk, none of that meant anything to you. So I guess you're just, <laughs> let's just all drink spoiled milk until we diarrhea our faces <laughs> off. How about that? That sounds wonderful. So glad I came up to you. You know, his inside voice was like, how did I lose this one? I came <laughs> yeah, up with you de see definitive it. language and nothing. He's like, I even put a cherry on top. <laughs> Metaphorical, Dylan. So Dylan's uh, licking the door. It's like, please, <laughs> stop talking about sugar. <laughs> Captain Carey's like, well, as I always like to say, do you go in Senny Ele Gessir Messina Isin Verme? Which, as we all know, is don't let emotions overtake you. I know Turkish. what it means. God, of course. Of course <laughs> you, at this point, we all know how to speak Turkish. <laughs> we all can hear your stupid Duolingo going, da ding! So um, he's like, and besides, you just told me three days ago that she did a great job. And Fraser's like, well, it's not like it's something personal. I mean, she's it was three days ago, which was only professional. So she's been bothering me uh, professionally as well. And he's like, well, I'm not disregarding how you're feeling, cupcake. <laughs> so it's like, because <laughs> he but was not kind exactly of listening. Energy, like, oh, my God. Listen here, <laughs> drama queen, okay? He's like, leadership isn't just about hiring and firing. It's also about life best while you're on an adventure! <laughs> now, listen here. You may look like Tilda Swinton, but doesn't mean we need the drama, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, like, I, uh, want, I yes. want you to improve on your strength as a leader, all right? But leadership isn't always acting on the power that you have. And Fish is like, Good point, actually. It's very, very that's good a, point. Good well, I came in here. My mission has failed yet again. This was wonderful. Great talk. <laughs> I will go eat shit. That was just the cherry on top. What is that rubbing against the door? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, no. hey, Dylan, there is not a key res on the door. It's on top of a figurative <laughs> Sunday. All right. Captain Kerry, if you don't mind, I would like to just walk downstairs for the next five minutes and mutter things about how terrible I am. Is that okay? Okay, here we go, going down the staircase for the first series of insults directed at me personally. <laughs> I'm such an imbecile, moron, idiot. Can't believe I actually did that. What was you doing? Why did you even get into this profession in the first place? That stupid man over there is licking the wall because he thinks there's a cherry on it. This is what I surrounded myself with. I could have gone to Cambridge and made something <laughs> in my career instead of doing this instead. Funny. I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> All better. Commercials. Here comes one right now. At Amica Insurance, we know it's more than just a house. It's your home. The place that's filled with memories. The early days of figuring it out. To the later years of still figuring it out. For the place you've put down roots, trust Amica Home Insurance. Amica. Empathy is our best policy. So the captain's like, all right, we'll just remove your emotion from the situation. I feel like Fraser is starting to push his agenda more than the boat's agenda. It's a problem for anyone in leadership. 
let their emotion override their professionalism. And it's what I told that whale when he was following my boat after accidentally nipping one of his kids. He tried to whack my boat with a with his tail, and I took an iron right out of the wall, plugged it into an extension cord, and burned his ass as he tried to charge me. <laughs> that whale has never forgotten me, but it's never attacked me again. And that's what I call adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so now Dylan is um, cleaning the boat. He's like, well, I'm going to give old STD a wash because it's the St. David. Um, unless he is talking to, about a specific brand of ham. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wash. STD ham. <laughs> We're going to wash this fat right off of you, STD. And um, then Ben and Sonny are working. He's like, are you doing okay? She's like, yeah. So then uh, in the laundry, Paris and Sandy are loving each other because Paris works and yes. makes jokes and stuff. And Sandy's like, she's an actual stew. Plus, she's funny. A funny stew, a funny stew who would actually know how to iron a small napkin. My prayers have been answered. So then so Benny, Benny and Sonny sit down and have a talk and he's like, how do you feel about everything? And I'm just asking you that as a fuck buddy, not an actual interested item. And um, Sonny's like, well, I'm just confused about that conversation. And he goes, well, what if I, what if I said I was confused? <laughs> nice, nice confusion turning of the tables. So Sunny is like, she's like, well, I mean, we're not married. We're not in a relationship. We're just a thing. And he goes, yeah, we are a thing. You know, you said item, which is a completely different thing than a thing. That's I wish you'd just been clear last night. Listen, I have to have less than 12 items in the speed checker. But if I have 12 items in a thing, I can still go through the speed checker. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no, not really. I mean, look, you know, the movie's called The Thing. It's not called The Item. No one's terrified. No one's afraid of an item in the Arctic, but they're afraid of a thing. It's mm. a big difference. <laughs> so she's like, well, I'm not. Uh, oh, she, he puts his hand on her leg because, of course. And then um, she's like, uh, well, I'm not, like, I'm not asking, asking for, for a, a ring, ring on my finger. And he goes, baby, I know that. And I didn't put one on there. I know, Ben. That's not the problem. And Please. she's like, but I'm not open to fucking around with other people. So that's on you now. And he goes, good. Then we're on the same page. <laughs> she goes, yeah. And then he like pats her leg. She goes, okay, well, if we are, then it's better. It's not better. He disrespected you. Do you not remember that he disrespected you and that when you confronted him about it, he made you seem like the crazy one? No. And it no, wasn't ma'am. about him fucking other people. He hadn't fucked anybody else. It was about him flirting with people right in front of your face. But just keep moving that goal so you can get back on it. Gross. Yeah. Boom. So Boom. now they're all cleaning. And all right, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby might make in the air. Bobby, 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 carry. And she's like, fuck me. So uh, then it cuts to Paris and she's found like this throw pillow. And she's like, what's wrong with this pillow? Has no one touched you in a while? Oh, I wish someone would touch me like this more than just a five pronged dick deck and kidna. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. So now it's Captain and Barbie. He's like, I'll be off the boat for a moment and going for an adventure. So he goes back, he goes down to a picnic <laughs> table on the dock. Um, why? No one really knows, but he takes Barbie down there and he's like, gold. I'm having tea again. I've never had so much goddamn tea ever. All right, let's <laughs> talk about you and Fraser. Do you ever drink tea? What kind of tea do you think Fraser likes? God damn it, I'm changing for a woman and I'm not sure that I like it. Listen, I'll learn a language for a woman, but chamomile, it might be where I drop the draw the line. All right. <laughs> uh Captain, that's not chamomile tea. It's actually a giant can of Foster's beer. That's right. Because Foster's beer is Australian for tea. God, keep so, in the fretty yorum. <laughs> hate tea. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What are we talking about? Hold on. Hold on one second, Barbie. Hold on. I need to tend to something over there across the, the pier. Okay. Oh, Jambonu Duvara Silmei Birak. Which, as we all know, is stop wiping ham on that wall, Dylan. <laughs> So he's like, now listen, you and Fraser, seems to be some conflict going on. He came in with a glass bigger than his head and told me, you are in that chair, Blanche. Any idea what that meant? 
<laughs> and she's like, well, for me, it's like it's such an honor to be under Fraser. I mean, he knows so much. He's so knowledgeable about sheets and, you know, um, vacuums and wind decks. Like, it's really fascinating. But um, we clash. Like, we clash. There's no lying about it, Captain. All right. Well, how are you going to get through that? Well, you know... It's like the time I brought home a Pepsi while I was wearing my Coca-Cola shirt. It was a clashing moment, but I figured out you just have to throw out the Pepsi. So uh, there it is. I'm going to throw myself out. No, what, how about a bit of solution? Okay, well, I'll just shut up. I mean, I've never had a Chief Stew. I've always been a solo stew, and maybe that's the challenge. The Pepsi challenge, if you were, if it's, as it were. <laughs> He's like, listen, we've got enough emotions in this job. Natalie, I'll talk to Fraser. He respects the work that you do. And you can't fix what he does. You can only try to not get thrown down the stairs in a wheelchair. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you seen any gay iconic movies? <laughs> not really not really sure. All right, no, don't end up I mean... like Joan Crawford in this situation, all right? You want to be the Betty Davis. <laughs> I'm confused because he looks like Tilda Swinton to me, but you're talking Betty Davis. Well, there can be two gay icons in one person. It's a lad, Bobby. All Tilda right. is pre-Betty Davis. Does that make more sense? <laughs> is it like Tilda is playing Betty Davis? There you go. <laughs> Tilda is a seed that grows into Betty Davis one day. Oh. It's basically All right, nature, here's what you do. Right. He here, here's what you do. You just watch. You watch, and you look for the eyeliner, and then you'll know, is this a Betty Davis moment, or is it a Tilda Swinton moment? <laughs> so um, she's like, I mean, I just stopped talking because like, it seemed like that's what he wanted, so I just stopped, but now he's like, still mad at me. Like, what do I do? And he's like, he loves you. You love him. We are done here. Have we said at this picnic table a lot? Because let me tell you, <laughs> I may not know a lot of, th I may know a lot of things, but one thing I really still don't understand is why am I craving chamomile already? <laughs> All right, why, why don't I? Why don't I just go get him? Don't worry, Captain. I've already rinsed it off. Him, not ham. <laughs> so um, Fraser is sitting with Zandy, and he's like, "Well, Captain doesn't want to get rid of her, and I have to respect that. I'm going to say that through gritted teeth." But I get it. And so Captain walks up behind him and he's like, oh, I had to talk with her. So you should go talk to her as well. Now, listen, her delivery is not great, but she does want to be better. All right. Now, I explained <laughs> the Tilda seedling to her. <laughs> and I think she's understanding <laughs> the gay version of our planet. So the door might be open for you to go in there and make some change. All right. Don't be the whale with an iron mark on your forehead. Fraser, here's what I want you to do. Okay, I wrapped her brain around the tilde seed. Now I want you to wrap your brain around this. Barbie's delivery is not great. Think of her like FedEx ground. Not great delivery, but you'll get your package at some point in about three weeks after the deadline. All right? So just, just remember, bad delivery, but still useful. <laughs> Unless we're talking about Etsy. Whew, you better look at those options. Sometimes it'll say three between three days and nine months, man. <laughs> Heard of something from Etsy today, and I was like, "Oh my god, April nineteenth! That's amazing! How are they doing that from Hungary? Because you know everything on Etsy is like oh, from Hungary." <laughs> And I was like, how did they do that? Nigeria. And then I get the receipt and I look at it and it's like, between three days and three months. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, that, that happens makes to more me. sense. That happened to me. It's like. Oh, your board game components from Poland will be arriving by Thursday. Oh, in May! <laughs> hey, Thursday in 2027, mate. All right. Enjoy. So, uh, and I should mention that it was in December when I purchased it because it was a big window. It was a big window. So uh, now it's time for the big sit down with Fraser and Barbie. So he's like, well, I'm sorry that yesterday ended the way it did. Of course I want it to be better. Of course I do, Bobby. He's like, oh my God, well, that's great. Because, like, I really admire you, though. Like, the way that you, like, I don't know, use a spray bottle, it's like, it's like true leadership. They should put you on the back of a penny. Like, the way that you walk into the kitchen and just stare at the chef without actually reminding him what he's doing wrong and letting him fail on his own. Like, I admire that so much. Uh, 
He's like, well, after Kat left, we had such harmony, such grace. You were the person that I needed. And if we just put effort into that again, I think we could have so much ahead of us. It's like, well, he sure did a nice pivot there. That's nice. He did. Well, because Fraser, some, I think Fraser is like me. We're both like best little boys in the world. And sometimes we get all fussy. And then someone just has to be like, now, now, here are the new instructions you have to follow, which is be nice to Barbie. It's like, yes, I can do that. <laughs> I, I just love obey. that he's like, and that is it. And I will not take insubordination. And she will not be working here today. I'm using language that makes it very clear what I expect. Okay, I will do what you say, Bob. Nice Bob. Let's go to lunch. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. I love you. Never loved anyone more than I've loved you. God damn it, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Fraser just needed a new set of rules to obey. Be nice to Barbie. I can do that. So there I you can go. do that. Okay, so now it's okay. Everything's great now. So Ben sits with a whiteboard. Um... As intense violin music plays and pretends that this is even a choice. Like, like, you're gonna, what are you gonna write the positives of every single person? Okay, you're a fucking one, and everybody knows you're a fucking one. Who are you gonna pick? I was actually shocked that he did this. I thought, surely he's not this stupid. <laughs> right. Yeah, they. They made this seem like it was succession. Like he was like, had his whiteboard out. He's going to pick out who's going to be the lead deckhand. And he's like, I have to make such a decision. Kyle's never set foot on a super yacht. So he's out. Uh, Dylan, he also, let's never forget, he spilled tobacco on the teak. And Dylan is very knowledgeable, but he doesn't know the boat that well. He's also super annoying. And the idea that I have to spend more time with him than I ever want to spend time with him, that's a problem too. And Sonny doesn't have as much experience, but... I like manipulating her and giving her some power might give me an upper hand later on. So let's do Sonny. Yeah. So isn't this her first charter or is it her second charter? Uh, you mean Not charter, boat? time Char- on a her yacht or whatever. Something like it's It's pretty small. I mean, although as she's reminded us many times, I grew up on the water. The water is my happy place. Oh, God. So did sea turtles. I don't want them driving my boat. <laughs> so um so then oh, so my, then, my I'm only sorry. point so isn't then, to even shame her experience it's just that he's saying well kyle's never done anything so he's out but i thought sunny was brand new too because later dylan says she's one year out from being green so yeah i didn't she's know if she's green. had one year before or if this is her first year i forgot she's pretty green and then ben is now you know, he's trying to make us almost feel bad for this situation he's in where he's like, well, if I give it to Sonny, everyone's going to think it's because I'm sleeping with her. Oh, and if I give it to Dylan, Sonny's going to be pissed. He goes, oh, I'm between a rock and a hard place again with me. It's like you can't keep putting yourself in, you can't keep framing yourself as if you are this innocent soul who gets put in these situations that the universe is conspiring against you. You shouldn't have been sleeping with the person below you because that's what happens is that now your authority is going to be questioned and your choices are going to be questioned, which is why it's always good to keep like, like a safe amount of, uh, you know, separation of church and state. Well, I mean, they did start, they started sleeping with each other before he became the bosun, but still you should have been like, but maybe he should have called I'm it off. A, I'm point. the bosun now. So we should chill out on this until after whatever, you know, but even if he didn't do that, you can behave more professionally on the boat. Like he's all over her on the boat, getting touchy with her, massaging her, like doing, it's just gross. Like, it's not only gross because it's like, oh, I'm a prude and I hate seeing people touch each other. It's gross that you're in a workplace and that you're treating one of your underlings like a piece of meat in the workplace. It's gross. Yeah. Whether or not she likes it. It's just bad. It's just bad, disrespectful behavior. So anyway, he's like, you just told to be between a rock and a hard place. But another thing, while I'm speed while I'm speed ranting, another thing, you can't say, oh, well, everyone's going to think it's just because I'm banging Sunny. So it's... They're going to think it's because of a personal decision. On the other hand, if I don't give it to her, she's going to be mad. Okay, so it is a personal decision because you don't want her to be mad. And it's a double personal decision because you don't like Dylan. Like, you're so unprofessional. I hope people see this and you never get hired to do shit again. Because one day, you're going to get these boats in a huge amount of trouble. And we said it about Gary, and look what happened. It fucking came true. You know, People like this are people like this. There's no changing them. And everyone on this show should be in danger, should know they're in danger. Yep. So uh, now it's on for but not to not to you know go. That was light. a good rant, Ronnie. That was a really good rant. I liked it. We are so in danger. We turn back. <laughs> I liked people like this or people like this. 
That yeah. was a great line. That was like a really like a profound no, thing to no, say. Like, there's nothing people else like to this think about. People, like, people this. like this are like this. There's nothing you can do to change them. When you see somebody like this, run, just run. So now it's time for a preference sheet meeting. Okay. Carmen Feld is from Washington, D.C. She's a socialite who runs her own PR management company. She caters to athletes. And and she basically, she Carmen and her husband or boyfriend want to be referred to as King Ray and Queen Carmen. And, oh, pig's ass. I'm not calling them king and queen. Oh, that's just, if they want to do that, then they're going to have to see themselves on their own adventure. <laughs> And um, we know these are going to be monstrous people because one of the girl's names is Tiffany and it's spelled T I P H A N I E. <laughs> Please stop. I missed that. Somehow I missed that. Please Tiffany. Stop it. That is one of the worst bastardizations <laughs> I have ever seen. T I P H A N I E. It's wrong in like three different ways. This is. <laughs> Your name is Tip Haney. No. Did did her mom let her name herself and also fill out the birth birth certificate? Like that's bad. That's just bad. Tiffany. So Carmen dislikes pork and Tiffany <laughs> is not a big fan of seafood or veggies, okay? And then they've got Brandon who says, "Not allergic to anything, just gay and picky." <laughs> I'm allergic to Brandon because did you recognize him? Was he on Potomac? recently because they uh, he showed was a, on, they showed was, a guy in the Potomac reunion that was dancing at the GNA party and it looked like him he may have been but uh he was also a guest i believe it was on below deck down under where he like he was on a charter last season and like he and his like gal pal were like fighting and he's like i it's like you need to just like shut up right now and then like captain jason had to come out because they, they wanted to go swimming in fact they did go swimming i think oh yes uh, i remember that and then like, he had to come fight. out I'm going in the water and he's like okay and i got yelled he at was him. the one who like also got into a fight <gasps> he was the one who got into a fight with that girl it went like from zero to 60 like he was, i don't know what her name was he was like oh yeah whatever crystal he was a mess. He is like someone, he is trying to get onto a reality show, and the best he can do is being a, not even a primary, but a like a plus one on charters for Below Deck. Oh, gross. Well, I'm glad we're really leaning into the gay guys yelling at women on this show. It's only been one week since it happened. <laughs> Let's do it again! So, um, Fraser is like, wow, what a loser. Which, you know, agreed. So Ben is, Ben like rubs his shoulder, like, see? And he goes, why are you doing that? Because he's gay. What are you just saying, like, good for me? There's two homosexuals on a boat. And he goes, no, I'm just saying, you know, he's picky like you. <laughs> like, I'm not picky. I just don't want to eat all these vile American things you have on this boat. So then uh, they want a beach picnic and a movie premiere night with a red carpet um and Sheffy is like well i failed us and mummy last charter so i just feel like i'm failing and failing and failing and constantly failing and it's hard not to come back when i feel like on the inside i'm not good enough so things are still great for him yeah he's still happy and then the chef is like all right um what have you done about the no pork thing and we see him down there texting norman he's like hello do you have non-pork bacon alternatives and Norman's like, unfortunately, we don't. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Fraser's like, well, I just Googled it. What about duck bacon? All right, hold on. I'm going to retract that because I can already see Dylan coming over here with a paper towel. No, we don't have any bacon for you to wipe off. How about just sausage? Like, why does this need to be like, we better find a bacon substitute. Just don't serve bacon, guys. Like, why is it this it's difficult? Is this uh, also, is this like a wild idea, but like um, turkey bacon? Is that like, is that like, is that going to blow everyone's minds? I think some Fraser actually $5. says that at some point and they just look at him like disgusting. What a monster. <laughs> so then it's provisions he turns time to ben Davis. and um, Ben goes to talk to the captain and he's like, I'm ready to appoint some responsibility. And to me, it's about character. So I'm appointing the character that's fucking me, Sonny, my lead deckhand. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I think she's great for the job. I mean, she's basically already doing it there. The other day I saw Dylan teaching her how to make knots. Surely she's ready. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and he's like, well, he's like, but it's going to cause some friction. Well, you better let him, let them, let him know straight up, be kind, but firm, make sure he doesn't wipe any ham on your butt. And if I need to talk to him, I will just give him a moment to process. If you have to say there's a cherry on top, so be it. So then, uh, where? It's like, <laughs> Delma's just banging up against the window. <laughs> where is it? Where's so- the cherry? I need the cherry. <laughs> Cherry on top. Um, <laughs> so before this goes on too far, I just want to make it clear: the gross thing here isn't really on Sunny's part. She didn't do anything. I mean, no, like, she's I didn't banging the boss. If that. I got, if I was banging the boss and I got a promotion, I'm not just going to be like, oh, I'm not going to take it because I'm banging you. I would take it and be like, I deserve that shit. You know, I don't think she's doing anything wrong. I think he's doing something wrong, and I don't think he's even. I mean, okay, you have to appoint. You don't have to appoint a lead deckhand. You're halfway through the season and you don't have one. So the fact that you yeah. need to do it and you need to do it with someone that you're being demonstrably that all over is gross. That's the gross thing. But it's not her. I, and, I would take the fucking job too. Uh, yeah, I think that the producers told him to make a choice because I think it's probably it was a producer thing. I feel like it was a storyline thing. Like, ooh, let's create some drama. But like, if it were me, if I weren't sure. I would give it another charter to see their experience. Um, or I would maybe say something to them and say, look, I have to decide a lead deckhand. Um, I'm going to base it. It's it's really, I'm, I'm having a tough time here. So I'm going to have to just really be evaluating your performance, this charter. And then, I don't know, maybe that could like help clear things up. But like this choice, it's just a strange choice. I, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I know why. But I, I think it's an unprofessional choice because I don't... It, that Sonny's just not qualified enough yet. So then we go to Paris, who has done swan towel folding. I mean, she's really gone the extra mile on these towels. They are insane looking. Yeah. <laughs> like huge Macy's Day Parade float style swans. And uh, she's like, on yachts, I used to make turkeys. It's a similar bird. <laughs> People love bestiality in the bedroom. <laughs> All right, Paris. It's, it's getting creepy now. <laughs> Have you ever seen a turkey dick? It's just pretty much the waddle. Listen, I know it's just a triple prong, which is going backwards in my <laughs> storytelling here. But the prongs themselves are unique because the left prong looks like a hammer. The right prong, prong looks like a pineapple. So it's a whole fascinating display. <laughs> Brandon, oh, I got news from your services. Brandon has missed his flight. Let's see if we can of see him online. It's like a TikTok of Brandon being like, you listen to me, bitch. You better get me on that motherfucking plane. You're going to see another thing come. He's just like a gay losing it at the airport at a, at a stewardess. It's the entire time. It's him getting out of his Uber, yelling at his driver. Thanks a fucking lot for making me miss my flight. And then him at like TSA being like, I don't have any metal on me, sir. You're wearing a metal necklace. And you want me to take this off? And then it's like, at Starbucks, how fucking long does it take to get a fucking cream latte in this in this fucking airport? Cars. <laughs> okay, now they're getting changed for lineups, and um, Ben gathers the deckies, and he's like, "Oh, I've been handed this golden brush before, and now I'm going to continue the tradition by making the lead deckhand." And you see Dylan, and he's like, basically like ham. I mean, he's sweating like ham. <laughs> he's got droplets like ham all over his face. He's nervous. It's finally happening. It's <laughs> finally happening. My new thin personality is going to pay off with an opportunity. Finally, I'm going to get the privileged thin people have always gotten and get a raise. And then... <laughs> it goes to Sonny. And uh, Sonny's like, wow, this is just like, gratifying, you know, with, like, you're, ac- you know, you're actually good at your job. And like, I'm just like really happy, like kudos. And Dylan's like, I'm thinking like, wow, you're joking. This must be like the first of April. <laughs> you're naughty, 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 jokey, pranky prank. But then I realized he's being dead ass serious. And I'm like, not going to be that asshole who's like, oh no, you didn't make the right decision and blah, blah, blah. Because you know, everyone's going to be like, you know what, Dylan, you are a dick. So I'm not going to be a dick. Have, I have a dick, but I'm not going to be a dick. What I will do is I will wipe off the calories off my dick. Funny, funny. Wacky, wacky. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so then we go to Summer, and she's like, um, you know, Kyle, I just, uh, Sunny, sorry. She's like, um, I don't want people to think that, you know, she just slept with her boss. And that's why she got the job. And he's like, I am the boat. What are you? They're coming right now. 
So uh, they start, the guests walk up and everything. And um, they they have crowns for Carmen and Ray. And Fraser's like, they want to be called king and queen. It's a bit of an insult to the monarchy. However, the monarchy isn't paying me, so I'll do it. <laughs> and now it's time for the tour. And um, Dylan is just talking to himself while he changes angrily. He's like, oh, we do our best when we do our best, don't we? Regardless of the situation, Sonny's asking me for advice. Last time she asked me to tithe. She never really asked you anything. You're just kind of mansplaining everything you are in her. Defense. Yeah, let's not forget that part. <laughs> we give and a lot like, of sun, we give Sunny a lot of shit on this recap, but uh, you're kind of a mansplainer more than a teacher. And and he really does lean into also like that the toxic male traits of saying things like, "Oh, how's a lead deckhand supposed to, to supposed to be asking a lower deckhand how to do things? Oh yeah, I forgot. You just have to have sex with the bo- bosun to get there. If I had a vagina, I would not be in this situation, and that bothers me." It's like, okay, sir. Uh-huh. Like, it's unprofessional for Ben to have to have made this decision, but let's not let's not start going down this path. Okay, I think maybe if you had a better personality. You wouldn't have been in this situation. Not I if you was going to say, even if you had a vagina, your personality would still be very off-putting. Okay, I fully believe the reason why Ben did not make Dylan the lead deckhand is because Dylan is so outrageously annoying that Ben just does not want to have to have those one-on-one meetings where he tells Dylan like these are your responsibilities for the day. He just is like, I just will. I want to minimize my time around this idiot. And also because you know that Dylan would immediately start the trying to usurp. You know, Mm -hmm. immediately he'd be like, well, we do need a better, stronger boss around here. Wacky, wacky, funny, funny, right? (laughs) Is Um, this the first of April? Yeah. So um, agreed. Um, I don't love the decision, but he needs to have some fucking class because it just now he's really going to start spinning out of control. So um, then he's like, oh, one one season experience, lead dickhand. <laughs> and then gets this like evil elf kind of laugh going on. He's a wreck. Okay, so now they're leaving the deck and Carmen wants some more olive juice and her martini. And then Barbie's like, all right, does anyone want shots, queen? Do you want some shots, queen? Okay, <laughs> my fucking life. <laughs> and um uh carmen's like when the drinks start flowing we start hoeing so oh my God, you, know uh, who, you know who said that don't you queen elizabeth who? <laughs> <laughs> actually i believe it was camilla packables the original <laughs> insult to the monarchy uh so uh so now summer's teaching ben uh anchor shackle stuff and dylan's watching angry like wacky wacky angry angry and then uh fraser's with chef and fraser's like chef what are we having for lunch and chef is like um i'm thinking mexican uh that's all i've gotten i just i was thinking maybe we go up there and i'll go mexican and that will feed them I'm not really sure what I'm going to serve. I can tell you this. It will be in ring mode. Okay, Ring mode. (laughs) Only things circular in ring mode is what I'm going to Can I take hard shell taco and break it into little pieces and put in ring mode and that counts as lunch? Everything he serves is in ring mode. Like 90% (laughs) of it comes out in a ring mode. Come on. So Summer, Dylan, Ben. Uh, summer god damn it okay first of all <laughs> let me just apologize because i know how problematic this is that i keep calling her summer i don't know why i'm doing it but i just keep doing it also ben and i are taking turns taking notes sometimes and so if he calls her summer it's because of me because i did notes on this one and this is littered with the word summer these notes littered. i'm gonna do something i'm gonna do something proactive i'm gonna change all the summers in my document to sunny to but smart sunny. but you know what i don't have that on my note i use a, an app to take notes called like notability or something and it does not have a find and replace on it which is crazy <sighs> i know but here you go you maybe you just need to start. find a new app and replace notability but all i've got years years and years of this shit i mean like I keep all my notes i like being able to just scroll through and being like oh my god here's what we were thinking in 2021 you know yeah, that's smart. It's actually probably good to do that, but I just erase my notes every single time. I'm like, 
Moving on. I know. You erase so, them line by line. You really don't live in the past. <laughs> I, I have to say. I erase them as soon as they're... I Well, I erase them line by line so I don't get lost, you know? So that way it's like just less... I just know whatever's at the top of the page is whatever needs to be discussed, you know? Here's something um, from um, May 31st, 2018. This is a recap of Southern Charm. Okay, go. Say it. Okay, let me just scroll to a random part. Shep, tough night. Austin, I'm sitting on that side. Chelsea, yeah, that's scary as fuck. Catherine, they see the horn like I knew PDA like a motherfucker. Looking at them looks like unhealthy mental hospital room couple. Oh, they're talking about Ashley. It's on that boat with Thomas oh, and Ashley. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, Great that was season. such gold. Such gold. So now we've got Sonny, Dylan, and Ben. And uh, Sonny is like, you know, if you were a dog, which would you be? And Ben's like, a Labrador. And Sonny goes, yeah, that's a good one. I'm a golden. He goes, yeah, you shed more. He goes, yeah, I shed a lot. And then he, like, starts rubbing her shoulder right in front of Dylan. Like, yeah, or it's, like, rubbing her, the back of her neck. It just really is one of those things where it's, like, uh, you know, your choice. Like, you could have made a – I know you're concerned – you, you made a choice based off you felt like you enjoyed Sonny's attitude and you feel like she has a willingness to learn. And, you, and, and those are all very legitimate things. But you were very concerned that people would think that she only got the job because you two are sleeping with each other. So why are you massaging her neck in front of the guy who lost out on the job? If you're concerned that this is going to affect morale or cohesiveness as a team, why are you doing something that highlights – that you two have a relationship out of working hours. It's it just ownership. is like so It's ownership and power tripping. It's so fucking gross. It is gross. And I'm glad in a way. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of, in a way, there's like a lot of sexism here with Dylan because like, have some respect. But on the other hand, it's total sexism with Ben. Like, you're supposed to just sit there and watch that all happen and be okay with that. That's not cool. It shouldn't be happening in the workplace. So. I don't know. It's gross. So then Ashley is like, um, I need utensils. I'm at it. What am I at a dentist's office <laughs> or dinner? Shep, can I get something out of your tooth? <laughs> I'm not sure how to eat this. <laughs> hey, you have a shrimp in your cocktail. Hilarious. <laughs> I Southern have charm. no idea where you are. That was oh. Southern Charm from, that was Southern <laughs> charm from 2018, you guys. I can't get off of these nets. Okay, let me, let me. I was like, Ashley, what? So now it's lunchtime. So, um, Ben's talk goes up to Kyle and he's like, well, I think that, sh I think that he's annoyed. I think Dylan's annoyed. So Kyle's like, yeah, he's not happy. You made it. You made Sonny lead. You can tell he's not happy. He had a big dune after all. <laughs> and Ben's like, Ben's like, well, I just need him to have space and settle down. Sometimes I have to say you didn't break a dune to get into a Scottish accent. You didn't break a dune. <laughs> Everyone should be happy here. You didn't break a dune after all. Oh, uh, and Kyle's like, well, you made the right decision. I follow her lead all the time. And Ben's like, oh, you agree, man. So now um, it's time for the first meal on board. And Barbie's telling her brother, oh, my God, this thing is so hard. This thing is so much work. I cannot wait to be at the Four Seasons after this. It's like nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so Fraser is like he's bringing the taco fish tacos to the table but they don't have tomatoes it's like this does not have tomatoes I mean how big of a wine glass do I need to swirl in front of this chef before he gets his act together missing tomatoes I think he's going absolutely insane it might be time to call the doctors in <laughs> I hope he does the tomato gaslighting Chef, there's no tomatoes on there. But I swear, I just put them on here. No tomatoes whatsoever. There's like a little pool of like discarded tomatoes behind the counter that Fraser's been pulling off. No, uh, he's just been dropping them and Dylan's been eating them. It's like the cherry tomatoes. <laughs> so uh, they deliver some fish tacos and Tip Haney is like, um, I don't eat fish. I'm good. And the chef's like, oh, um, uh, I guess we'll get you a chicken salad. She's like, yeah, I guess. So then... The chef goes down to start a salad now. And <laughs> Tiffany's like, um, thanks for the salad. And Fraser goes, so you don't eat Caesar salad either? No, she doesn't eat vegetables or fish. So why would you yes. serve her fish and then vegetables? I mean, listen, I don't like her name either, but that's not a reason to just screw the woman. Does her name look like it was written by a three-year-old? Yes. Does she have the palate of a three-year-old? Yes. Does she talk like a three-year-old? Yes. But you know what, though? 
She is a guest, and in this house, she gets to have her hot dogs and French fries. Yes, just let her let her have her stupid dame and her damn non vegetable life. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So, so the captain is like, how many times do I need to say, read the preference sheet? Oh, God. Chef, she doesn't like seafood, so stay away from that stuff. Got it? It's like I always say, Terse, say, Fasini, Okuyun. Read the preference sheet. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times. <laughs> Don't end up like Demir Israeletti Bellina. The whale with an iron mark. <laughs> and tonight, if you keep fucking up, I'm going to have to make a change. So uh, now uh, they're going to pick up <laughs> Brandon, the late gay. And uh, so they're, <laughs> they're going to send a boat for him. And Brandon's like, oh, my God, I get this boat all to myself. What up, bitch? Is there a grinder on this boat? <laughs> Fraser's like, he seems insufferable. Seems fucking terrible, this guy. I wouldn't want to go to your bar either. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. Um, so then um, Fraser, yeah, <laughs> Fraser is like, I don't want, gross. So then Brandon comes on the boat. He's like, sup, what's going on, everybody? Sup. And Fraser is like, well, Bobby's turned to leave. She's ready to be better, she said. So I'm going to put her in housekeeping. Hmm. We'll see how she deals with that. <laughs> Plus, I need to see what Paris is like with the gifts. I should be able to count on my students to do anything. Um, so, cut to Paris trying to fluff a guest. Look, no one's fluffed this pillow in the longest time. That's a guest, Paris. It's a guest. <laughs> well, it's either Paris fluffs guests or Barbie uses the evil queen against me as a weapon. <laughs> sure, which I'd prefer. So, on deck, um, the crew is passing by the primary window and they're boning. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God, look at this window when you come down. They're fucking porking. Do you think it's too early to ask if they're on Instagram? <laughs> so um, uh, so they're just, like, talking about how they're having sex and everything. And then uh, everyone, the, the guests go back upstairs. And Carmen's like, Brandon's here. Woo! And Brandon's just like... Walking, he's swishing through the boat, being like, "This is stupid, stupid." So funny. They show Ray going, "That guy is out of control," and it just cuts to him going, "This is stupid. <laughs> this is worse than that bitch at Uber who <laughs> took the wrong exit to get to my house. Stupid <laughs> bitch." So Barbie is talking to Dylan and saying, "Hey, Dylan, I just wanted to say I'm proud of you today. Oh my God, only three fingernails. No, I didn't. I wasn't talking calorically. I just meant, you know." lead deckhand and everything and he goes oh well i'm just waiting for the right time to talk about it because listen i've got two years commercial and four years she goes, but you're being a man about it <laughs> she's like trying to be like you're so mature and he's like oh i can't wait to rip him a new one after this i mean summer's my girl and like i'm but i'm like definitely team dylan here like i think like He's getting the job, like, like her getting the job has a lot to do with her relationship with Ben. It just, like, doesn't really make sense. But, like, I'm in a weirder position because, like, I'm the second stew and Zandy's actually the second stew. So I'm, like, more on Dylan's side. Except I think the difference is that I'm not constantly washing ham every 30 minutes. So I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I just wanted to point that out. Just keep it cool, man. He's like, I'm a hundred. I am a hundred. Funny, funny, wacky, wacka, April the 1st. April the best. So, um, so chef is cooking, and um, the the people are like talking. One of the guys is like talking about going to Virginia, and I love this woman. She goes, "Oh, we went to McDonald's, and it was a good McDonald's. You know, when the French fries are like hot." And I was like, "Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. We are going to be best friends, lady." So then, their food is delivered in you know ring molds. It's tuna ceviche. And Tip Haney gets some mac and cheese, which I love the chef's subtlety. He's like, oh, you don't want the fish? Here. Here's children's food. <laughs> but of course, everyone wants it. Yeah, the like, guy, that's amazing. What did Tip Haney do? <laughs> can we get? The, can we order off the kids' menu, too? And um, uh, so they don't really – they actually don't really like the, the ceviche or the tartare that – that Anthony has served. They all want the mac and cheese. And Fraser, of course, is like, these people like Burger King and McDonald's. Of course they're not going to like ceviche. Now, Fraser, now you've crossed the line, okay? Because some of us enjoy ceviche 
and also enjoy a Big Mac. And you are listening to one of those people. Yeah, and also how are, how is any how's the chef supposed to guess that? You know what I mean? And Ray is the king. Ray is <laughs> everyone else. Other people are like, eh, it's okay. And Ray's like, what is this? And they're like, oh, you've had it before. And so he tastes it and he goes, ew, ew, bleh, yeah. <laughs> Classy, Ray. Classy. Like a, Especially with your plastic of... crown on. I know, after you've just been, like, boinking with the window open in front of the staff. <laughs> Super classy, Ray. So, so then the Fraser's like, oh, God, I think the chef is just paddling, paddling to stay afloat. And listen, he's great, isn't he? His food is brilliant, but... I just don't know if he can pull it out at this stage. <laughs> it's like watching those guests having sex earlier today. I just think it may be too late to pull out. There's no pulling out there. It's just <laughs> slop and mess at every turn. Well, I normally would stand up for the chef at this point, but I'm, I think I'm ready to really just on that one. You know, it's like seeing an Echnita of walking up to a glove with five holes in it it's like at that point it's like okay paris enough we don't need the full illustration mm -hmm. so zandy is cleaning uh with barbie and she barbie's Zandy's like little hairs you always wonder where they came from and barbie's like this is why i do service no i'm sorry i was just brainstorming names for my autobiography <laughs> little hairs you never always wonder where they come from the zandy story <laughs> um uh, so then let's see paris and dylan are at the bar so dylan's like oh hello new girl so listen i'm pissed been made such sunny lead deckhand and she's one season from green and i have worked two years commercial and four years yachting and i'm no longer fat so it feels like a slap in my thin face can my <laughs> cheekbones take the disrespect i don't think so but i don't want to bore you with any of that what is this the first of april wacky wacky <laughs> funny funny <laughs> it feels like a slap in the face with ham that hasn't been washed sugary calorie film all over cheeks now paris first gives, of april not wacky paris gives the best response i've ever heard on the show she goes go hug the banana downstairs <laughs> <laughs> is that australian for masturbate no it's australian for go hug the banana that's downstairs <laughs> Everyone in Australia has a banana that stands stairs. That shit was so funny. So Carl is uh okay, so now they're at the, the guests are at dinner. Okay, so one of the guys is like, Wow, it's nice to spend time with everybody. And Brendan goes, Yeah. And Ray, it's nice to get to know you because uh, to be honest, and he goes, What do you mean to be honest? We just met. And he goes, No, no. I'm talking about the drag show. You walked out of there. Because it was a gay thing. Uh, you know, Brandon is a, what I like to call a crosswalk gay, which is that when you're driving through West Hollywood and um, you have to stop at a crosswalk, and like if you're just like <laughs> bigly cross the crosswalk, Brandon's the one who walks on the crosswalk in front of your car and it's like, back the fuck up! <laughs> Or like is like doing like a performance in the crosswalk as he walks, or he's like, "Hey, girl!" Like whatever it is, whatever. Some when he gets their crosswalk, he is performing. That is his stage. That's funny. Um, yeah, I can see that. You better back up. This is a crosswalk. Pedest you car me pedestrian. Move up. You literally almost killed me. You literally, <laughs> I almost literally died because of you and your privilege. Uh, okay, okay, sir. So the guy's like, no, I did not walk out because it's a gay thing. It's just more that it was a surprise thing. And look, whenever I'm surprised, I'm a little shaky. He goes, oh, really? Well, all I'm saying is that it hurt me. It hurt me when you left that drag show. And <laughs> this guy's like, well, I listen it was an I, atmosphere I, I wasn't familiar with and it was a surprise and um of course i'm gonna have I, my defenses yeah. up i thought i was going to the good mcdonald's and it was a drag show i thought so i was, I was getting like, crispy fries and i got <laughs> drag <laughs> i mean you know it's one thing when you think you see early bird but when early bird starts lip syncing donna summers it's just a little disorienting okay so at first I was like, all right. So the guy walks out of a gay bar being like, I'm not staying here for this. Of course, that's gross. And I don't blame the gay friend for being like, eh, I wasn't sure about you when you left the gay bar, like grossed out. What the fuck, dude? Like, I don't, 
I don't necessarily blame him for this starting off with the conversation. But then I just had to get that out of the way because that's the last positive thing I can say in Brandon's defense. Because then Brandon goes, I wouldn't do that to black people. I mean, if it was all black people, I would not walk out there. That is crazy. Like, you guys are black. But like, if I like, I'm not like, ew, you're black. I'm like, so what? They're black. I was like, oh, Mike, please say he's not doing this right now. And then he continues his, yeah, his, and gets louder and louder and worse and worse. Girl. Yeah, he keeps on saying like, like you don't have to warn me before I go into a black event. Um, and Girl, so. <laughs> no, no, it's not the same thing. First of all, I don't like that, you know, he had to be warned before a gay thing. But a gay thing is much different because that's, some people just are never exposed to that. They don't understand what it is. I mean, I've had friends who I've taken to gay bars that are like, what the fuck? I just assume they're one of my best friends from childhood. And so it would be totally natural to take them into the fault line. And we walk in there, it smells like bleach. And there's like guys swinging their dicks at your face. Like, they're like, what are you? <laughs> like, you can't just expect. It's it's a different. It's different. It's not the same thing as being like, well, your race. I don't get mad at you about your race. That is crazy to do that. I so I don't know the context of whatever happened with this guy because like it does sound to me vaguely like homophobic, but I also don't. It also could be that let's, he was like, oh, I thought we were having a chill night, and then it turns out we're going to a drag show, and I was like, didn't want to go to a drag show. Or I don't know what it is. I'm not going to make excuses for him. I'm not going to try to understand it. But what I do know is that Brandon saying like, I don't have to be warm before going to a black event. It's like, can you leave at least leave space to? For to 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 for the possibility that not everyone is like you, Brandon, and that some people don't like being surprised. They like to know exactly where they're going to, and just because someone doesn't think like you and doesn't approach a situation like you does not mean that they're necessarily wrong. Now, the greater context of what happened at the gay bar, I don't know, and quite frankly, I really don't care. But what I do think is that Brandon is he is going to try to make a drama out of anything he can make a drama out of because he's a crosswalk gay and he wants to be on reality TV. Oh my gosh. I was like, wow, this guy really does not give a fuck. Cause he just keeps saying it over and over. So the friends are like, well, I think Ray's point is, you know, let me know what I'm walking into. And Fraser is like you, he goes, Brendan is upset because I don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> I'm still trying to get through the way Tipani spells her name. So I've got bigger fish to fry, Tipani. literally, for her. There's someone you should worry about. All right. Tipani. By the way, I'm, let, me, let me adjust that for her preference sheet. I've got bigger burgers to fry for her. She doesn't eat fish. So um, uh, they're like, oh, my God. Barbie's like, I live for gas drama, but this is, like, dark. I don't like this. And Paris is like, it's comedy gold. This is amazing. And, you know, they're basically, these guests are going at each other about, well, Brandon's going at it. And he, Brandon's like, I mean, you should let somebody know what room you're going into. That is crazy. And the lady's like, yeah, you should. And he goes, no, I don't need to be told that about black people. Hmm. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, but also you're, you also are not a black person yourself and you don't know what experiences this man has had going into any room where he didn't know who was, who was in there. So I, I just, this guy, Brandon, trying to, trying to like <laughs> act like a citizen of the world in this moment, it's really not working for me. So, uh, I mean, as much as I can be a citizen of the world, which who knows, but late this, so then they're just like trying to talk him down and everything. And he's like, he's like, I just, I didn't like, I didn't know her like that. I didn't, if I, I didn't know if I would feel safe. And like, that's the world we live in. We got to feel safe. I guess oh, that's, no, I'm why. Sorry. Goes, that's, that's my bad again. It's uh, Carl who said that or Ray who said that oh. Ray's like, well, listen, I didn't, I was still new to Carmen. I didn't know her. Um, and I walked into this thing and I don't, I don't know, you know, like we need to feel safe in this world, you know, and uh, from gay people is what, is what he means. So I'm not really standing up for him either. I'm just like, Brandon, why are you taking it to this place? So gross. So now the next dish comes out and it's shrimp something. And it's also in a circle mold. And chef, I'm really trying to stand up for you here. But you're killing me with the circle molds. Like literally everything <laughs> is something slimy in a circle mold. <laughs> it's shrimp mofongo. 
Uh, so then, meanwhile, Zandy and Fraser are talking at the hot tub, and Zandy's saying that Barbie has completely changed, and she's become, like, really good now. And Fraser's like, oh, I'm really proud of her then, and if she wants to change, then that's, that's what I want from her. Like, thank you for coaching her. Good work, sweetheart. I'll just going to just stare at myself in the mirror and sit in the fact that I was so terribly wrong. Hold on one second. You're so stupid. You're an imbecile. You're an idiot. Why did you do this? You don't even deserve to be on a yacht, let alone a canoe, you stupid fucking disgrace to your family. I feel much better now. Hmm. Thank you. So now Paris proves that she's born for reality TV, which we already knew, but she walks right up to Ben and she's like, so Dylan's upset. He thinks you chose Sonny because you're banging and he feels more qualified and he's been yachting longer. His panties are a hundred percent wrapped around his ball sack down there. Now, listen, if he was an echidna, he'd need about five pair of budgies, <laughs> but he's pissed is what i'm saying and so ben's like how dare he it's not cool to have that attitude on deck and him going around to the other crew members is obviously not on and then they show clips of ben five charters ago ben bitching about jared to literally everybody who will listen hypocrite i'm glad at literally. least the editors are calling him out yeah and also let's not forget when he enabled barbie to like launch a like a well, when Barbie was upset at Fraser many charters ago, and he was like, well, by the way, Barbie's not happy with you, Fraser. So yeah. um, so then uh, Brandon and Michelle are... <laughs> so Brandon and Michelle are still... They're just all still Basically, talking the, the girls table. follow Brandon, because Brandon walks off. He's like, I'm not going to have this. I don't do this to black people. So he walks off, and then the girls follow him. And Tip Haney is like, Oh my God, I was just about to eat a Hawaiian roll in a circle mold. What are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, um, why did that whole table stick up for that? What is going on? And she's like, they didn't. He goes, they did. And so back at the table, uh, they're like, well, I appreciate the way you had that conversation because that was not easy. And one of the guys is like, 100%, I'm backing you. And so back to Tip Haney, she's like, um, I mean, hearing different perspectives, it, is good because then we hear different perspectives, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, it's like if a fish was trying to talk to a vegetable, you can't just say no to both. Actually, you can. Never mind, I forgot what we were talking about. I hate salad, so. It's like the time I almost got run over by a Ford Taurus at Robertson in Santa Monica. I said, it is not a different perspective, Pippity! <laughs> <laughs> so then um dylan is saying good night because he's going down and ben's like well i'm gonna need to talk to you tomorrow because there's a few things that have come through you've been chatting to other people about the scenario that happened this morning with me making sunny lead dickhand but we'll talk in the morning uh no you can talk to me now dad yeah do it now send me down to stew about it Oh, for fuck's sake, you're offended by the fact that I am offended by your shit decision? Dude, fuck off, this is not the first of April, wacky wacky. So then the ladies are like, Brandon, you know, I think we can, you know, just get over this and everybody's different. And Brandon's doing that bouncing thing and he's clapping and he's like, you should not have to let someone know what kind of situation you are in. Like he's bouncing up and down like the rage, you know, and they don't, have to, they don't have to warn me at a black event. I'm like, oh, just please yeah. just end this episode because I'm about to lose my fucking mind with this guy. So Carmen's like, listen, the only way we can change is if we can inform and listen and educate. He goes, and I love you bitches more than anything else in the world. And it's like, we love you. He goes, and that's my point. So they're like, oh my God, we just want to go back to our food served in a ring. So, so then the we chef, go to the chef can't find tongs and phrase is like can't find tongs literal insane asylum literal <laughs> straight jacket he's lost his marbles he's trying to chef is trying to like serve dessert he's trying to like put some ice cream on this molten chocolate cakes and everyone's excited for the molten chocolate cakes they've all had they were all were testy but they've all you know brandon and the girls they went back to the table and brandon had already told the guy like i love you so much so like now they just want to like have their nice chocolate molten cakes and this guy cannot find his ice cream scoop and fraser is just like watching and and this guy's like going through all his like messy drawers and pots and pans and everything and it's just like a total disaster and at one point fraser's like 
something needs to change or we're not going to make it. And then it cuts to Anthony just like picking up a yellow pepper and like smiling. <laughs> it's like, it's like, not only is that not an ice cream scooper, it is not something that needs to be held while dealing with chocolate bone cake. That is not something that needs to come into play right now. And then we cut to next week on Below Deck, Paris saying, I'm sorry, but we've only got normal bacon. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> like, oh my God, this is ending with you fucking up the bacon? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Like, why is there bacon on board? Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for being here for Below Deck. Um, wow. What what an episode. Uh, we'll be back later. Go get tickets for our live stuff. Europa, etc. Los Angeles, Netflix, all this. Over at patreon.com slash watch what crap happens. Thanks for being here on video. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Stroll in the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurt. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger with Without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish, it's Jen Plish. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crap and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey. 50 high school senior girls descend on Mobile, Alabama every summer to compete for a massive cash prize. It isn't Survivor. It's one of America's most lucrative scholarship competitions for teen girls. It's been around for seven decades. Now you'll hear what took place behind the scenes. From Pineapple Street Studios and Wondery, this is the competition. I'm your host, Shimo Liai, and I was Nevada's contestant 20 years ago. Now I'm returning as a judge to find out what two weeks with 50 of the country's most ambitious teens can tell us about girlhood in America. What happens when the competitors are thrown into the deep end with the best and brightest? And how does surviving the competition prepare them for everything that comes after? Follow the competition on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of the competition early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. I love a good parasocial relationship with a celebrity who will probably never know my name. I mean, honestly, who knows? Don't count yourself out. (laughs) But my favorite part about these feuds is how they're ignited by the tiniest things. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. I accidentally laminated my brows too much. It starts small and then it gets so big. Be honest, Naomi, I'm fearful of you to this day. I don't know her. We all just have to admit, we're addicted. Everybody has opinions. Everyone picks sides. Leave Britney Spears alone right now. From Wondery, I'm Sydney Battle. And I'm Matt Bellisai. And this is Dis and Tell. La, la, la. Where we unpack why we get so invested in these feuds. And whether or not our attention only makes the whole thing worse. Follow Dis and Tell wherever you get your podcasts.